This is the non-military version of the Commando Padlock, Commando Lock Company Padlock. Um, here's the one side. There's the, so we'll call that the left. Got these sort of extra embedded wafers. I'm not exactly sure what's going on there, but we'll find out. There's the front. And the other side. It's pretty symmetrical. There we go. And back to this side. Okay. Then here's the key end. You can see made in the USA. I believe these are the special rivets that they talk about in the data sheet. I don't know if that's a master keyway or not, but pretty pretty basic. Lots of room to maneuver in there. Um, if they wanted to make it a little more secure, they could use a more circuitous keyway, but I think for this application it's probably okay. And then here it is from the top. Okay, more rivets and more of these embedded rivets and the keys one side zoom in a little bit you can see the key code which appears to may have the appearance of but is not a direct bidding code that's a good security feature I've looked at a few of these and it does not appear to be a direct code there's the other side Keys are nicely made, clearly milled. You can see the faces of them, so pretty nice. Now here is the mark that I made on it in the previous video with the tip of my knife, which I think has an AUS-8 blade, um, but it may not be a good reference. So this is a Craftsman screwdriver, standard issue, made, I don't know, about eight years ago when I bought it. So I thought I'd try that as a alternative scribe. So I'm just going to use the corner of this and you can see that that leaves a pretty good impression if I scrape repeatedly that does appear to be making a superficial mark but I think that's just scraping through the finish with that okay the knife actually dug into the metal a little bit more I can feel a deeper groove there. Now if I use something that's a little bit harder, this is the end of a, a pick which is made from a um, hacksaw blade and that broke, so I'm assuming this is a pretty hard part of the metal. Let's pick another spot here. And I make a mark. And that feels like it's digging in a little more. Not making a huge amount of progress, but, you know, reasonably good. Um, and then as a reference, here is my carbide scribe. I think I showed in another video. I'm running out of places to test this thing. But let's come in here, right above the logo. So this is something that should be very hard and is designed to actually cut. And yeah, that's making a decent mark in there. So this piece of metal, not too bad. 
let's just take a look at the shackle now. Focus again. And we'll just screwdriver. I can't get any purchase on that at all. Just no, no effect. That's the part that claims to be hardened. There's that piece of hardened hacksaw blade again. And that's also just gliding off of that. And then this carbide's uh, scribe. And I can feel that actually digging in. And you can see that does leave a... Ooh, let's see if we can... Yeah, you can see the mark that that left. But that's carbide, so I would expect that to scratch it. It didn't dig in hard, though. Um, so... You know, shackle, same, and this is just the hardened shackle. They also make a boron shackle, which I was unable to obtain. Hardness-wise, not too bad. Let's look at a few other aspects of the construction. It's reasonably heavy. It's clearly made out of steel. Um, this is all steel. That's clearly steel. The rivets are steel. Okay. Um, look at the shackle video. That looks good. A little bit of play, not bad. Let's look at the clearances, even though we know that it's not going to, we're not going to be able to shim it because of the ball bearings, but just for the sake of the construction, a little bit of clearance there. Um, yeah, tolerances are not bad, I'd say. So, key goes in, I'd say, nice and smooth. Rotation, not a whole lot of resistance, and then shackle opens. I'm able to relock it in the open position, which I noticed in the video, so I can now remove the key with the shackle open. And I wouldn't be able to relock it, but I can you know, operate it, I can leave it unlocked in this position, and we can see the ball bearing, which claims to be hardened. I don't have a good way to test that at the moment because I'm not going to be able to get purchase on it. Decent, I would say decent millings on the shackle, though I, I might like to see these a little bit deeper, but they may have chosen to make them shallower to not compromise the, the pull resistance on that. The other thing that you sometimes will see in a, uh, let's say a fancier lock, the S, like some of the SNGs, is that instead of this being a, a through cut, like they've taken a, a milling cutter or a drill and just cut a straight, what they do is they actually come in and make a, a cut in um, with a, a, like a ball end mill so that there's more metal on the sides here and it's a little tighter fit with the ball bearing. I don't know how much of a difference that makes in strength, but and uh, you know, I wouldn't say it's too wobbly. A little bit of tolerance, but not bad. Um, there's no spring on it, which I kind of like. But uh, So you can just set it there and get it where you want it. And then lock her back up. So I've got the thing chucked up in a vise now. I thought I'd look at attacking the shackle with a few other, maybe more appropriate tools. So I have here a Sterrett, brand new Sterrett um, hacksaw blade. Hacksaw, pretty standard thing you might use to attack a, attack a lock. So. Let's just give it a little, I can feel it just gliding over the, the steel. And just to show you the spot where I just hit it, I think you can see a tiny mark, <laughs> barely. Actually, I'd say it didn't hardly even leave a mark other than maybe burnishing the surface a little bit. 
And again, that's a brand new hacksaw blade, uh, fine tooth, so I would expect something from that. And then another tool, this is a Nicholson triangle file, not brand new, it's had a little bit of use on it, but it, it tends to cut pretty well because it's got these kind of sharp edges on it. So I thought we'd hit it with that, see if maybe that gives a little bit more. I'm not going to be as aggressive because I don't want to mess up the file. Now that is grabbing a little bit. Um, though I'm afraid it is probably dulling <laughs> the teeth on my file more than anything else. Okay, I can feel a, oops, I can feel a mark here. And you can see a small mark, but, you know, I think if I kept doing that, um, the shackle would have won. It would have destroyed my file more quickly than getting through the shackle. Now, I'm sure bolt cutters of sufficient size would chew through this. I'm not going to bother with that. Next attack. Next thing I'm going to do, because we're, we're, you know, we're pickers, not thieves, um, is look... See if I can get the lock core out <clears throat> and take a better look at the locking mechanism itself. So we'll see how that goes. Continuing our investigation into the commando lock. Um, it has now been about 20 minutes since I filmed the last segment and I've been in the garage with my Dremel. Uh, I cleverly think I've already packed my angle grinder which would have made faster work of this. But I've made two grooves here um, and then this thing is really hot so I'm going to use this little clamp to try to hold it up so I don't burn myself. And then I've excavated a little bit of the top. I'm trying to get the plug or the, uh, the entire locking mechanism out without destroying it. So I've removed this little corner of metal here and this uh, top piece here. If I, can, I don't know which way it goes, but it probably goes like, you know, I don't know where it goes. It goes in here somewhere. No, it would be that way. Anyhow, yeah. Ah, well, sorry guys, I cut through your logo. But anyhow, um, so... We can see that this there's nothing special about this. Uh, what I thought might have been a, oops, shit, might have been a uh, some type of hardened steel insert or whatever. This is just a part of the outer outer uh, lamination. But I did find one interesting thing. So this is from this this is from this corner here. Okay, so this is two laminations thick, and you'll notice that they are. Well, they're still joined together. They can rotate a little bit. So there's a rivet or a pin of some kind through through there that is holding these together. So even if I had even if I had um, ground off these rivets, and I read the instructions, so I knew that this wasn't going to get me very far. If I'd ground off these rivets, the whole thing wasn't going to fall apart. So you can see I've been able to excavate around the plug. Um, I can now see, or not the plug, but the entire core. I can now sort of see the boundaries of it. I need to come up a little higher here and come around here, get some of this, this next layer of lamination off. And then I might be able to get it out if there's no retaining pins. Um, so that's going pretty well. And then interestingly, I was like, well, I saw a lot of smoke coming out, which I assume is that WD-40 burning away as this thing gets really hot. Um, but interestingly, the lock still functions. So if someone had attacked it this way and after 20 minutes given up um, with their Dremel, then uh, you know your lock would still be locked in place and you'd still be able to get it off with the key. So back to the garage, back to the Dremel, new grinding wheel, and uh, we'll see, see what happens next. Okay guys, it's been about another 10 or 15 minutes. 
and as you can see I have successfully removed the core from the lock. We can see the interlocking mechanism um, that the tailpiece of the lock would engage with and I believe if I yep come in there that releases and it's not going to go any further for me. So I'm going to put this back. You can see part of the cam. I may take the rest of that apart at some point. Um, so I ended up removing where to go this piece and another little piece which went flying across the garage. You can see that's still being held together pretty tightly by, I had to actually pry that off a little bit by the rivets which I've shorn through. You can see they're kind of these, this addi these additional rivets here are holding these laminations together so even if I had compromised all of the outer rivets all of these pieces here are still staying together um, in significant part. Of course I've cut the sides off by the side millings here but this is, I'd say that's a pretty nice construction and they seem to be individual each pair of laminations is individually riveted together so that's going to make it probably a lot harder to rip this thing apart if you wanted to <coughs> attack it in that manner. The other thing I'll note before I get to the cylinder um, is that as I was cutting through this material um, I could feel that each individual plate or each individual lamination had been, it felt like case hardened so I would hit, when I hit the corner of something or I hit a new plate, the wheel would kind of bind up and um, scrape and scrape until, probably until it got it hot enough that it destroyed the temper and then would start cutting through again normally. Um, so it looks like they've taken the care to, to harden each of these laminations before they put it together. So this actually potentially gives you a stronger, and particularly with all their rivets, a stronger construction than a solid piece of steel which you would not be able to more than about an inch you, you probably would not be able to get that much hardness and once you got in there you're dealing, you're dealing with soft steel here the face of each of these things is that hardened steel so as you cut down through it whichever direction you go your grinder is having to hit lots of very hard material which tends to tear it away um, and my grinding wheel is pretty much toast at this point. I may have another inch or two left, uh, inch of cutting left on it or, or so, but it's it's down to not a whole lot bigger than the plug um, from you know this diameter. So it, this thing did a number on my grinding wheel. Okay, so I'd say pretty decent construction on that. Um, uh, I'm not I'm not dis displeased with that at all, particularly for a laminated lock. And particularly for a lock that costs like, I don't know, retail seven dollars or something. Um, so not bad. Okay, so I have now destroyed my lock um, in significant part, but this is the plug that came out of there, and it actually, if I give it a little twiddle, can go back in. Um, you can see that I thankfully stopped this this cut here before I got a little too excited because I would have probably ended up cutting through the cylinder and I wouldn't have wanted to do that. Um, but here's the lock, the actual lock, um, and it still works great with the key despite having been heated to the point where I think all of the oil burned inside it. Um, all the lubrication <laughs> burned off. I could see smoke coming out of the thing for a while. It's a little it's a little rough in there, but um, that's not surprising. But it still functions. And I would like to make a point. Now let's see if we can get a really good shot of this. Now this is a lock which is not ever designed to be taken apart, right? Clearly. But if you look at it, let me see if I can get a good angle there. If you look at this carefully, you can see that the plug is held in by a circlip. Now we all hate circlips, but I want to make the point that those new master slash American locks that a number of people have done videos on, they just basically peened over the metal on here, or they, you know, permanently affixed the plug. These guys went through the trouble to put a circlip on there. Um, not that we're going to be repinning this in any useful way, but 
you know, they've gone through the trouble to, to actually construct a pretty decent locking mechanism. You can also see here this this bit, the tailpiece, which rotates when you turn the key. I hope I'm in focus here because I don't really want to shoot this again. This tailpiece engages directly into that slot down there, directly into the locking mechanism that, that actually holds the bolt in place. So there's no way you're going to bypass this. There's no way you're going to stick a wire or something in there and um, and actuate the and, and release the bolt without the plug turning. So I'd say pretty secure design, nicely done. Um, and they, despite it being a little bit smaller in in stature to an American core, which I clearly don't have one laying around, but um, it is a five pin lock, and it's better constructed, I would say. So the next step is I'm going to take this puppy apart and see what's inside. Okay, so we've taken, I've now taken the locking mechanism apart and I found some pretty cool stuff in here. So let me zoom in on, so you can see there's five pins, five springs. The springs are steel, which you don't see, I don't see that all that often. The pin chambers appear to be countermilled a little bit but more than you normally see um, maybe from the side it's a little more apparent but there's a little bit of countermilling you can see some there so that's interesting so this is pin one so this is the top pin on pin one for the driver for those of you in, England, in uh, Europe and I would call that a serrated spool and if you were watching the video last night, <clears throat> you could see, you could hear me going on about feeling, potentially feeling serrated pins, and pin one is one of the ones where I felt that. Um, unfortunately, I'll, I'll try to zoom in on the video when I edit it, but um, <clears throat> it's a little hard to see, but there's also some conical, some sort of tapering at the top of this, so it acts, um, and, and actually it may have been, I may have it upside down may have gone like that. But at any rate, it actually may act a little bit like a mushroom as well. So it's kind of a neat hybrid pin. Um, I've not seen one like that. Actually, I suspect it was this way. Okay. Pin two is a standard spool. Okay. And then, as is pin four, so I won't show you that. And then pin three is also one of these funky, I'm gonna call it a hybrid hybrid spool, so sort of serrated, sort of mushroomy, sort of spooly, so kind of three security pins in one. The, the serration in the center, these things are so tiny, it's maybe a, I don't know, an eighth of an inch long at most. The serration in the center is a, is a smaller diameter than the outer diameter of this thing. And that may be where I was getting that false set that just wouldn't clear. It may have been getting hung up on that little guy and um, and just would not get out. So between the chamfered um, chambers and everything else that I may just, you know, not have been able to apply enough pressure to um, get that out of false. So that was pin three and then pin four is another spool and then another um, and then the last pin, pin five, is a, you can see it there, it's just a, a standard pin. So, I'd say pretty cool pinning. Um, pretty neat pick. Um, I picked two of, two of these so far, and they both had some really weird behavior. So, if you're interested in just having some fun picking a lock and not spending a lot of money, um, I'd say these are pretty cool. Security wise, I think they could make this lock even better by putting um, serrated drivers in. I'm sorry, serrated T pins in. Um, maybe a sixth pin. They've got plenty of room in there for it, it looks like. Um, there's almost a, if you look at the plug, there's almost a, 
a, a hole for a six pin there, and I, I think if they, I think there's probably clearance in there that they could get one more pin and make it a six pin lock. Um, and I would like to see some kind of drill protection on the plug. Um, they've got, you know, pretty decent steel overall in the construction of this thing, and just putting a couple of drill pins in the in the front of the plug or even some ball bearings, I think would, you know, would make it better. Replacing this <coughs> this front piece here, or maybe inserting a uh, a piece of hardened steel in this area to protect the plug, because they've otherwise got a pretty solid lock, I'd say. Um, and if those ball bearings are really 440 or four, you know, 440 hardened stainless, according to the manual, um, then I would expect you know your drill resistance up here is probably pretty good, but if you drill this puppy out, you're going to be able to open it pretty quickly, and that's just brass. So overall, I'd say a decent lock in its price band um, with a uh, a little bit more investment in the uh, construction. I think it could be a really good lock, probably one of the better ones at this in this price bracket. And obviously, if they were to you know take some of the same technology and apply it to a, a lock with a you know, more solid body or thicker shackle. Again, they do make a boron shackle, but you know, some other features. Um, a removable core would be really nice. Um, I think they have a. I think I think they've got. A, they're onto something good here. So, um, looking forward to seeing what they have, uh, what their next products are. And um, if you don't have one of these locks, hit the go to keeppicking.com. Click the banner ad for these guys. Um, Here's their logo again. And again, I have no best incentive whatsoever in doing this other than just pure lock geekery. But uh, Commando Lock Company. Um, I don't know if they're military grade yet, but they're getting there. They're certainly more military grade than those stupid American locks they've got out now. So I think they got them beat. Um, so you get two for one deal on keypicking.com and a personally hand signed thank you letter. Um, for ordering, which is kind of neat. Uh, you don't get that very often. So there's their website as well. So um, this is Alex, um, and this is the, uh, this is not the lock I killed. This is the lock I killed. This is the Commando lock. Um, the standard, standard edition, the military edition, has the sort of yellow, um, what's it called again? Yellow trivalent chromate finish on it. I don't know what that means, but um, it's probably cool. And um, anyway, so thanks for watching. Um, have fun, and please keep it legal. And happy Thanksgiving for those of you in America. Cheers.